simply stay on her feet. She holds the box triumphantly. I'm sorry, Entrots. It's not happening. Natsuki says there. Having almost fell, Natsuki is a bit shaken up. I say, geez. No need to prove yourself to me. There's no way you'll be able to get the bigger boxes like that. I can reach them, so just... She says, I said I can do it. If I do a playthrough after this one, 100% kawaii anime girl voices. Yeah. Mm. No. She says, I don't want your help, okay? I sigh. She continues, I'm gonna get a chair, so just hang on. She forces her way past me out of the closet. She says, let's see. The classroom chairs have the desks attached, so they're too inconvenient to fit into the closet. Aha, she says. Atsuki trots over to the teacher's desk, which has a computer chair behind it. She rolls it on its... Oh, God. Rolls it on its wheels back over to the closet. I say, ah, it's a little dangerous since the chair swivels and rolls. But I already learned my lesson, so I keep my mouth shut. And I'm gonna let her crack her head off the fucking floor. Natsuki climbs onto the chair, then slowly balances onto her feet. Since she refuses my help, I take a seat with my back against the side of the doorway and simply watch. <laughs> Aha, there we go, she says. See, I can easily do it now. Natsuki grabs a stack of manga and bends down to put it on the shelf below. The chair swivels. Natsuki catches herself on the shelf. What are you doing, she says. Can you at least hold the chair steady instead of sitting and doing nothing? <laughs> Who was it that told me not to help? I say, yeah, yeah, I got you. I hold the chair while Natsuki reaches back up. I'm alerted. I can... I can almost see up her skirt. I force myself to turn away. Natsuki seriously didn't think this through. Once she realizes, I'll be dead. Natsuki wraps her arms around the Parfait Girls box set that looks like it's a pretty long manga. Easily the largest one on the shelf. Heavy, she says. Hey, Snake. I don't think I could bend down without falling. Hurry and take this one. I say, but then I have to get, let go of the chair. She says, that's fine. Just for a second. Hurry up. I say, all right. Let me just stand up. I slowly... Re Wait, I was sitting while doing that? Jesus. S I slowly release my grip from the chair. She says, what do you mean, stand up? That's so he looks down at me. She says, why are you all the way back? Natsuki looks like she just realized something, but she'll lose her balance if she moves. I say, Natsuki, the box. She says, what are you looking at? I'm alerted. You're trying to look at my... Natsuki's legs shake. I'm not, I was just... Natsuki, don't try to move. Just give me the box. She says, you, you perv. And her face has turned to anime. You set me up, she says. Go away. Get out. I say, but... She says, I'll do it myself. The chair suddenly swivels be beneath Natsuki's feet. Natsuki, I say. The scene turns into to chaos in a split second. The chair flies from under Natsuki's feet. Frantically, I try to catch her. The box topples out of her hands, and the books go flying. <laughs> wow, I draw Jesus. I say, I got you. Crash. The full force of Natsuki's body against me throws me to the ground, because I'm apparently 10 pounds soaking wet if I can't catch her, of all people. A whole bunch of books pelt me in the face, as I deserve. Natsuki tries to shield herself with her own arms as her face lands straight, into on, straight on my chest. My right arm and my back seriously felt the impact. I broke everything. Slowly, Natsuki comes to her senses. She presses on her arm straight into me to prop herself up. Natsuki seems to realize that it's not the floor that's beneath her. Gross, gross, she says, as she continues to beat... Oh, yep. Yeah. A fist pounds on into my chest. Natsuki then hoists herself to her feet. What were you thinking, she asks. You sicko? Monica said, asks, is everything okay over there? I heard a loud noise. How deep is that closet? Monica suddenly peers in. I guess it's deep enough that no one can see us when we're in there. Natsuki says, Monica, see what happens when you put the manga on the top shelf? Are you trying to kill your club members or something? Jeez. Sorry, sorry, she says. Natsuki continues, oh, and one more thing. 
It seems like your most recent club member is a total pervert. So I hope you're happy. I say I didn't. Somehow it's impossible for me to explain this whole bizarre situation to Monica. I say I didn't do anything, I swear. Monica says, I know, I know, don't worry. Monica says that quietly to me. Looks like I'm off the hook. Oh no, says Natsuki. My, my. I look down. Natsuki is kneeling on the floor, holding one of the books that are scattered all over. There's a large diagonal crease along the page that she's desperately trying to smooth out. I say, ah, it must have landed on the page. Natsuki tries a bit more to fix the crease, but she can't get it out. Suddenly, she gives up and slams the book shut, then throws it to the floor. Instead of continuing to yell, she just lowers her head. A sob. I say, Natsuki, are you? She says no. Natsuki's voice squeaks. I see tears on her face. Ah, I say. I'll help get the crease out, okay? It's partially my fault, so... Natsuki shakes her head, still looking down. No, she says. I don't even care that much. I'm just... having a really bad day today. Natsuki sobs again. I didn't mean to take it out on you. I really didn't mean to. It's... it's fine, I say. Is there anything else? Is there anything you want to talk about? Natsuki shakes her head. Just... every day... is so hard. I just want to... come to the club and... Natsuki falls silent again. I can't press her, so I can only do what I know how to do. Alright, I say. Well, I'll help clean this up. And I'll move the rest of your manga for you. I pick up volume two of Parfait Girls. We'll set this one aside, I say. This will help cheer you, up, cheer you up a bit, right? We can get started on it once I'm done here. Natsuki looks up with her glossy eyes. Her lip quivers. You're... You're really nice to me, she says. That sounds really strange, coming from Natsuki. I didn't expect it at all. Well, I say. I'm just treating you like a friend, you know? Natsuki lowers her head and stifles another sob. I'm not sure what happened to her today, but being nice is the least I could do. The next couple minutes are silent between us as I begin gathering the scattered books. Make sure to slip them into the box in the correct order. After a little bit, Natsuki starts helping. It isn't long before we're done, and I hoist the box onto the shelf where Natsuki wanted to put it. Then, I get on the stool and quickly finish moving the rest of her books from the top shelf. Alright, I say. That should do it. I hop off the stool. Natsuki averts her gaze. She says thanks. I say it's nothing. Natsuki is holding the volume I set aside in her hands. I say, alright, I'm ready. She says good. Even if you weren't, I'd make you anyway. You're taking responsibility for what you said. The thing about cheering me up. I say, if you insist. We sit in the same spot as last time, and I open the second volume. I feel like that was a long time. I'm surprised this scene is still going. Natsuki's mood quickly improves, laughing and pointing things out to me. She's surprisingly sharp, making note of a lot of subtle repeated jokes and background elements. In the end, I'm pretty impressed by how... Everything ties in together. Ties together in this manga. I guess Natsuki has good taste after all. After some time, Monica gets our attention as usual, and it's time to share poems again. I say, guess I'll be holding on to this one for now. Yep, she says. Even you sound more enthusiastic. Even you sound more enthusiastic this time. I say, well, I'm starting to get into it, you know? She laughs. Told you. I say, yeah, yeah. I return to my seat and slip the book into my bag. And we're at the second poem reading. So, let's start with Natsuki. It, the start is really happy, and honestly, I would be fine playing this as a, thing, as a visual novel that doesn't change and get completely messed up, you know? Like, I'm kind of curious how things would have normally progressed had were things to not take a very sharp, dark turn. Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me, then back at the poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. I, say, I ask, is it that bad? She says, no, no, it's not. It's good, it's really good, okay? There, I said it. Ugh, this wasn't supposed to happen at all. <laughs> God damn it, entrance. 
Natsuki says, why can't you just be bad at this? My poems are supposed to impress you, not the other way around. Zavrin and Trots would like to disagree with you. I ask, or I, I ask, you're trying to impress me? She says, obviously. You think I'd let you enjoy Yuri's writing more than mine? Give me a break. Well, I say, in that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? She says, I'll tell you, you. Natsuki's face freezes like she just realized something. You. You trying to impress me? She asks. Natsuki vigorously scans her eyes over my poem one more time. Then, the poem slips out of her hands and flutters to the floor. I have to use the bathroom. Red-faced, Natsuki quickly walks out of the room. Monica says, hey, Snake. Did you do something to Natsuki again? I just saw her rush out like that. You didn't do anything terrible, did you? I say, no. I just told her that. My voice gets caught in my throat. There's no way I could tell Monica that I'm trying to impress Natsuki. Hmm? Asks Monica. Monica sees the poem lying on the floor and swiftly picks it up. She reads through it, her smile not fading from her face. I see, she says. You wrote this for Natsuki, didn't you? I say, I mean, not really. She says, in fact, didn't she like your poem a lot the other day, too? The other day meaning being yesterday. She continues, I'm surprised you know her taste so well already. Are you sure you're not cheating, Snake? Cheating, I ask. What do you mean by that? She says, never mind, I'm just kidding. I didn't understand Monica's fourth wall-breaking joke at all. She says, anyway. How do you think Natsuki feels about you? Oh, you don't need to answer that. It was just something for you to think about. Natsuki says, hey! Natsuki comes up and snatches the poem out of Monica's hands. Neither of us had, to... Neither of us had noticed her re-enter the classroom. She asks, did you read this, Monica? She says, of course, I liked it. Natsuki says, you should really stop reading things that aren't for you, you know. You have a bad habit of doing that. She says, eh? But Snake wrote this poem. And we're supposed to share it with everyone, right? Natsuki freezes. She apparently forgot that my poem is technically for everyone to read. She says, okay, well, I think Snake is done sharing this poem with everyone. It's not like anyone would want to read this anyway. In fact, I'm just going to hold on to this. She, Monica says, if you insist. Natsuki says, what? Why are you looking at me like that? Like what, she asks. Never mind, says Natsuki. I say, ah, Natsuki, I'll give you the poem, but it's still not very fair to Sayori. She hasn't gotten to read it yet. Natsuki says, so what? Monica says, well, I guess Snake is right, Natsuki. It's not fair if you don't let everyone finish reading it. Natsuki says, fine. Natsuki returns my poem. It's not like she's going to like it, though. Anyway, read my poem now. And no, I won't let you keep it. This is my only copy. I was actually really hoping that no one else would be able to read it and we'd actually just kind of skip ahead. She says, not bad, right? I say, it's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. And I think there is nothing new past this point. Yep, it's the same. Yep, we appreciate her kind of writing. Okay, then we can skip through... Why is Monica not here? Oh, because she already read it! That's really funny, actually. Okay, I'm curious. If we... Load... Load this one. We've got a Monica first. Uh, so if we go to Monica first, then Natsuki, what happens? Because Monica's was normal. Uh, let's see. No, this is actually exactly the same, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It just extends Monica a little bit, but we're gonna make sure we load what we had. So, Sayori should be the same. Yeah, 
same. And Yuri's will be a little different. Yuri says, Are you still mad at me? For disrespecting Natsuki yesterday. Because reading this poem, now I know why you got mad at me. Because you, you prefer her writing over mine. I say that's not really true. Here continues, meaning when I disrespected her, I disrespected you too, didn't I? Yeah, it's really similar. It, nothing significant changes there. She says, oh no. I say, Yuri. You might be reading into this a little too much. She says, how could I be so stupid? I always let these things happen. Whenever I think before I speak, I just come off as awkward and unlikable. But if I speak without thinking, the things I want to keep inside come out and make people hate me. So, please don't force yourself to be around me. I know this is what Monica wants, but it's not fair to you when you could be enjoying your time with Natsuki and Sayori. I say, Yuri. She says, please. It makes it easier for me if you don't have to express any concern. Besides, I have my books with me. That's all I need. Yuri smiles sadly and puts her head down on her desk. I'm frustrated. I don't hate her, but it's as if she's not capable of listening to me over her own thoughts. I sigh to myself. All I can do is accept that that's how she is. That that's how she is. She wants to be left alone, but I have no choice but to abide to her that request. Alright. This is the festival stuff. Just gotta make sure I do another save. We're actually getting through this real fast. Everyone does their little speech. That's if he does hers. Oh, what was the history here? So instead of asking me about Yuri, Sayuri asks me about Natsuki. So that's the one difference here, about who would walk home. And because we know that this choice barely matters, uh, we're just going to snub Sayori super hard instead. So let's see. Especially because this is a different dialogue. I say, I think I would be afraid of what you'd do to me if I turned her down. Sayori says, isn't she so cute and fun to be around? I say, that has nothing to do with what I just said. She laughs. You admitted it. I say, geez. There's not an, even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. She says, well, maybe. But i just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? I say, need you? Sayori. Can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry, she says. I continue, everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm, she says, if you say so. Conversation feels trails off, and I'm left feeling awkward. And we're at the next poem. Okay. Lollipop, silly. Fuck. Fuck Christ. Damn it. Oh god, we're doing really badly right now. Blanket. Pop. Doki doki. Play. Damn, no, play is not one. Games. Yep, games anime. Mm, warm? No? Warm? Mm. Swimsuit. I actually don't know if we're gonna get this one. We'll see. Dream? Nope. Heartbeat. Yeah, heartbeat. Doki Doki. Yeah. Lipstick. Marshmallow. Rose, damn. Jumpy. We'll see. I'm actually not sure which one I got. Monaka says, oh man, the last one here. So let's skip until we switch to the next. Sayori's super depressed right now. But let's ignore that, that's not important. Okay, we're still getting Natsuki. I look up and see Natsuki next to me. She says, are you just going to sit there and keep staring at nothing? There isn't that much time, so... I say sorry. Didn't mean to make you worry or anything. 
She continues, it's not like I'm worried. I was just... She glances down at her side. She's holding a volume of manga in her hand. I say, that's right. Something just came up for a minute, but we can get started now. It won't make you wait any longer. She says, geez. Now you're making me feel like a jerk. Something's bothering you. Then you can just tell me to leave you alone, and I will. I mean, assuming you didn't feel like talking about it or anything. She practically mumbles that last part. I say, nah. I'm probably making it seem like a bigger deal than it is. It's actually a really big deal. I've just been thinking about Sayori, that's all. She says, Sayori? Thinking about her? I say, yeah, she seems pretty down today. But she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh, she says. Natsuki exhales. Well, first of all, you should really work on your phrasing. But anyway, you're her best friend, right? I say, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, she says. Then in that case, I think you should trust her a little more. If she needed you, then you would be the first person she would go to, right? I say, well, I guess that's true. She continues, I mean, if some people just have some people just have those days, you can't always avoid it. If anything, she probably doesn't want you to worry about her because it's not that important. I say, yeah, that's kind of what she said to me. Maybe it's not right for me to go against her wishes. Exactly, she says. If she needs you to worry about her, then it'll be a lot more obvious. I say, yeah. I should have thought of that. I should have thought of it that way from the start. Natsuki fiddles with the book she's holding in her hands. She... She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? I say, don't get the wrong idea or anything. We've just been friends for a long time. It's normal, it's normal to be worried about your friends. And yeah, the protagonist, Frosty, is... Oof, not great. I say... I continue. I mean, you were worried, worried about me, so... She says I was not. Jeez, if you're fine, then let's hurry and get started already. I say, yeah, yeah. Monica says, okay, everyone. Wow, that's... We don't get the same scenes with Natsuki than we did with Yuri so far. Weird. They're, like, a lot shorter. I think we had the chocolate scene with Yuri last time. That's weird. So we're doing poem sharing. Huh. Alright, we'll start with Natsuki again. Natsuki says, let's see, let's see. I say, you're certainly enthusiastic today. She says, of course. You know I like your writing. I say, I'm just surprised. It seemed like you had a lot of trouble admitting that before. She says, well, well, of course. I just had to put you in your place a little bit. It's not like... I mean, it's not like I was shy or anything stupid like that. Or jealous. I really wasn't jealous. Just because you happen to be a good writer? That's such a dumb thing to get jealous about. She laughs. I say, Natsuki. What? She responds. I say, you're not very confident about, our, confident about your writing, are you? What are you talking about? She asks. My writing is obviously the best. Right? It took me a while to figure out, but I think I finally did. Maybe Natsuki acts so arrogant because she's trying to make up for her own insecurities. If she acts like she's the best, then other people might think that way too. Right? She asks. Snake. Please just tell me you like my poems. I don't care if you hate them. Just please tell me I'm the best. I just... I just really need to hear that from someone. I know I sound stupid. But there's a reason I never showed my poems before this. Natsuki, I say. She continues, because... Because nobody ever takes me seriously. What's the point in sharing my poems and people just laugh and say, That's so cute. That's so cute, just like you, Natsuki. Sometimes I don't want to be cute. But nobody understands that. And yet I still continue to put lots of fucking ribbons in my hair. I try really hard when I write. The style doesn't matter. The emotions are there. Why can't anyone see that? I just want... Natsuki trails off. Maybe it's because her lips started to quiver. I look down. Her fists are clenched really tightly. I say, hey, Natsuki. If you're not careful, you rip your own poem. I gently grab the poem with my own hand until she relaxes her grip on it. I place it flat on the desk and smooth out the wrinkles that she put into it. She says, don't read it. Before I can pick it back up, Natsuki snatches the poem up from the desk. She says, it's not any good. 
And I know you hate my poems. So you don't have to read this one, okay? But I want to read it, I say. She asks why. I say because. I like your poems. I really do. Why would I judge you for your own style? For your style. It's not like my own style is anything crazy. I mean, it's true that the first time I read one of your poems, I didn't look much into it. But I know you better now. And it's wrong for Yuri to think your style is more amateur than hers. And Sayori, she always means well. But sometimes she's so focused on simple happiness that she doesn't understand what people really want. Yeah, I guess I never really thought about how hard it is for you. And I'm sorry if I was part of that problem. I understand now. You're not just cute, you're a lot more than that. Ah, Natsuki, you're doing it again. Once again, Natsuki clutches her poem a little too hard. She looks down, hiding her eyes from me. I never realized how difficult this was for her. But finally, she forces herself to extend her arms and set the poem on the table. Desk. Damn it. There's no table here. She says, you can read it. Just turn that way. I don't want you to look at my face right now. I say, okay, I will. I'll just get a drink real quick. Okay. Natsuki asks, Why are you looking at me like that? If you don't like it, then just say it. I won't get mad. I say, no, it's not that I don't like it. I was just... It was just a little surprising to read. Uh, actually, this is all stuff we've seen. Ah, that's different. We said we were going to keep it, actually. Sensing Natsuki is satisfied, I start to hand the poem back to her. But as I do so, Natsuki takes my hands and pushes them back away. Her small, soft hands surprise me with their assertion. She says, I don't want it. I, a I ask, why not? She says, I just don't. Jeez. I realize what Natsuki is doing. Unable to be honest, she's trying to give me the poem in a roundabout way. I say, well, in that case, I'm going to keep it. Instead of teasing her, I choose to go along with it. Good, she says. If you didn't, I would. Never mind. Just, I'm glad that you want it. Natsuki backpedals on her words and leaves it at that. Despite her best efforts to hide her expression, I can see her faintly smiling to herself. She says, that's all for now, so go put it away before someone else sees it, okay? I say, yeah, I'll go do that. With that, I return to my seat so I can put away Natsuki's poem. So yeah, I just took her poem so now she can't show it to anybody. Sayori shouldn't have changed. Yuri doesn't look too enthusiastic about spending time with me. I guess if she didn't, if she changes her mind, she'll come to me. But I should leave her be for now. Okay, skip right over that. Ah, uh, that's kind of like how Natsuki was as well. She's like, ah, go fuck yourself. But a Monica. But she's asking what we're gonna do for the festival. Oh, we should also save just real quick. Save to save. That is new. Let's actually load that back again, because that's a lot of new content. So once she reads our poem, she says, Sticking with the Natsuki style once more, I see. Hmm. You really, not, you really like Natsuki, don't you? I say that's... Oh, come on, Snake. It's awfully suspicious, you know? Spending time with her in the club room every day pretending to like the manga that she's into. I ask, you know how Natsuki is. If I don't indulge her, she'll end up hating me. She says, eh? No, I think you're misunderstanding, Snake. It's not like, Nat it's not like Natsuki just hates anyone who doesn't give her what she wants. Yeah, she's assertive, but she's not that selfish. In fact, I think you're the only one who's indulged her as much as you have. I say, is that so? I kind of knew that, but I didn't want to admit it. Monica continues, so... I just need to ask one thing of you. Be careful, please. Natsuki is, a kind of un Natsuki is kind of unpredictable. A lot of times, she doesn't even know what she wants. After all, she's the youngest one here. She might not know how to handle her own feelings properly. What I'm saying is, if something bad happens, then it could end up damaging the club, too. 
And you wouldn't do that to me, right? I say that's... I'm not sure how to respond to Monica. Well, I care about her in the club, it's also kind of unfair to bring that up. She says, well, you're smart. I'm sure you'll do the right thing. Monica smiles sweetly. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now. She says, you know, I feel like learning and looking... This might be something we've seen. Yeah, this is what we've seen already. As long as she doesn't reference Natsuki, that's pretty much all we need to know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he walks. That's very oddly specific. That's her advice. And fade. Oh, I think we get to pick... Yep, they, they made fun of her catchphrase. I think we get to pick who we help. Yep. So, we're gonna help... So no, we're gonna help Natsuki, of course we are. Oh, I accidentally skipped a piece. I say, well, baking sounds like a 